try to leverage your dog's meals, right? Try to use them in a way that's going to be training focused, relationship focused. Don't just give them that free bowl of food. It's a waste, right? Welcome to another episode of Dog Sense. I'm your host, Kathy, and I'm here with my co-host all the way in Colorado, Sarah. Hey, guys. All right. So today's topic is something that Kathy and I are both super, super passionate about. We talk about a nonstop with our both puppy and dog owners as well. And that is why dog bulls ruin training. And people are like, wait, what are you talking about? <laughs> It, but once we talk about this, you are going to 100% get it. And I'd like to start off with saying most dogs love their bulls. As a matter of fact, they may love the appearance of their bull more than they love the appearance of you. And when there's so much value in that, we like to decide when and where and how that bull is divided up throughout the day. So Sarah, start off with wrapping through some of the things that we do to use that food value. Okay. So the same way that, and I'm sure you guys have noticed this with your dogs, the dog sees a dog bowl. They know it's food time. They start to go crazy, excited, right? We want to build that into you. We want them to see you. you they get that excited because the food and the training is coming from you. So one of the first things is use that food bowl or use that meal from your kibble uh, from their meal times um, to play a lot of training games and use that food to build your relationship as well, right? There's uh, so many things that you have to teach your new puppy or dog. You might as well be leveraging their meal food, which they love anyway, to be coming from you so that you guys are building your training relationship as well. You can start off by using games that you have food in your hand and lure them around, right? So a lot of times it's referred to as hand feeding, where you literally are taking the food from your hand and you're feeding it right to your dog. You could teach them to lure into a sit. You could work on healing. You could work on your down. Um, then you could also do games where you then throw the food out ahead of you, where they then chase after it, right? That makes it lots of fun and exciting. But again, the food's coming from you. It's not coming from the bowl. That's what makes you much more valuable. Now, here's a few things I want to talk about. Number one, not all puppies know or dogs know how to take food from your hand. And you're like, wait, yeah. that's weird. But it's true. They yeah. don't. And Another thing is when you start throwing the food on the ground and telling them to get it, I want to caution you that if you've just done some games that involve blocking and not grabbing food, it's going to be a way harder sell for you to do this. So I'm not saying not to teach blocking games, but what I am saying is don't teach them and then ask your dog to get it, get it off the floor, because that's a really confusing concept. So you want to make sure that you don't pair those two things together. Now, more than even throwing the food, Sarah, you can even get to the point where you're restraining the dog. You throw the cookie, they're like, I want it. And you're like, ready, ready, ready. And then you can release them, get it. And then they fly to the cookie. And then you could run the other way and say their name. When they get to you, you could throw a cookie again. But there's just so many ways to make this dynamic and make it a brain and a body workout at the same time. But in the house and at a training location, that's not the only place to use it, right, Sarah? Yeah, next up all the time we tell students, bring your food out on a training walk for breakfast time. A lot of times people who live in apartments or condos, or maybe they don't have a fenced in yard, you have to go potty walk your dog anyway. Bring that food with you. Um, a lot of, and also sometimes what we hear from students is that, you know, if you feed raw, um, but you could always do free, uh, free dried raw. You could do a food tube. You could do small chunks. My dogs eat raw. I just wear gloves, right? So I literally just have gloves on and I can still feed them the treats that way. But now, um, you know what, with the whole Rona thing, you yeah. wear gloves. People don't think you're weird. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> oh, yeah. True. We should worry about the variant. She's got her gloves on. So yeah, you're not even going to get any attention from that. People are just going to go, oh yeah, it's the times. So there you go. Yeah. And also because out on the training walk, you need to make yourself more valuable than your environment. And a lot of times it's really tough to do. There's sights, there's smells, there's other animals, there's other people. But if you have their meal kibble on them and they're so pumped, they haven't eaten breakfast yet. They're so ready for it. All that value and all that rewarding, all that, um, the engagement is coming from you. And again, not that food bowl that you just put down on the kitchen floor. Now, there's two other things that I like about training walks. One, if you're feeding your dog from your hand, you're teaching them that being close to you is awesome. Yep. And so many times dogs want to be away from you, either ahead of you or behind you or wide from you. So this is helping that as well as keeping their focus. So yep. if you're walking with food, you are now more interesting than the environment. Now, additionally, I hear from some people, they're like, I feel guilty. Like we should make our dogs work for their food. Like, isn't that their right to eat? No, no, no. You, you got it all mixed up. 
this is something that creates a relationship. They want to do it. They're excited to do it. They're not writing on Facebook, ah, FML, I had to work for my meal today. No, they're not like that at all. They are wired to work. Dogs are contra freeloaders, which means they are wired to want to do things in return for getting something. So you're just building up a relationship and giving them what they want anyway. So don't feel guilty about it. This is something that is really meant to grow your dog's positivity and optimism, not to make them feel like something I don't want to do because I've never seen a dog who doesn't want to do this. So there may be some times where maybe you're running late for work, you missed your alarm, where you can't necessarily, you don't have time to go do a 10, 15, 20 minute training session. What we then love to do is we're still not going to feed the dogs out of a bowl. You have so many other options. So could be stuffed bones, toys, stuffle mats or scatter feeding, puzzle bowls, slow feeders, those kinds of things. So now you might say, well, what the heck, what is my dog learning from that? What is that doing? Right? So they all promote the, that calm state of mind the dog. A lot of times we call them like Kathy's, um, her uh, frozen recipes for her food toys. Her ebook is called perfect dog pacifiers, right? They help create that calm state of mind. The dog can almost go into like a meditative state when they are doing like licking a frozen food toy um, versus if it is something like a puzzle toy, that's really mentally engaging for them. They have to think about all the different ways that they can use their tongue. Maybe they're using their paws. Maybe they are flipping over the toy to get the food out. That's really engaging for them. Um, so it can provide that mental stimulation, which will also help tire them out. Um, but for something like a frozen food toy, that helps them settle. It helps them learn how to self-soothe. Um, so that can be something that is really awesome to help bring them down a couple notches as well. Now, it's worth noting that not every dog has the frustration tolerance to work at something to earn the food, right? They try, they're like, "Eh, I can't get it. Can you help? So what we do for those dogs is we make it a little bit easier. So maybe we give them a bone that's wide. So the food just comes right out of it. Um, I've had students who use those hoofies. Now, I don't love hoofies when they're not supervised. I'm worried about the dogs ingesting them and they stink to high heaven. But you could get a hoofy and put some of the food in it and freeze it. And then when you take it out, it's an easy win. But I would stress to you that you supervise it. And then once your dog gets better at those kind of things, then you can do the frozen food toys. You can even go to the puzzle toys. Um, The only name I know, and I'm not promoting anybody in particular, but I know Nina Addison. And she has puzzles where the dogs literally have to pick up a piece and move it to get to the tree underneath it. So again, those are things you supervise because if you left yeah. it alone, they would probably whittle it down to sawdust um, <laughs> and they make it in plastic too, but still. Um, but those are ways to challenge your dog a little bit more when you're home, maybe you're cooking, maybe you have people over so that they get that brain and body workout that they really need. Anything else that we can touch on for training sessions with the food bowls? You know what? I like remote rewarding. So I don't always want the food on my body, right? Because I think at some point your dog's like, hey, you got that treat bag. I'm happy to do that thing. So I would move the bowl to a remote location. So maybe I'm training in the living room and I have it on the mantle. Um, And then I go to a hidden training session uh, section of the room. So maybe I've hidden it behind the couch. And so the dog does something. I'm like, yes. So I've marked the behavior. And then we run behind the the couch and we grab the food and she gets some out of there. And then maybe I put it in the other room and I hide it in a different location. So I love the idea of remote rewarding through the bowl. And you could set your training session up like that too. So the dog is not there yet. And you go outside, you go in a room and you put maybe two or three paper plates, hide them around the room and surprise the dog with the food. And they're like, are you kidding me right now? I didn't see the food on you, but it's still in the environment. I can earn it. That's amazing. And so that teaches your dog to do the things you want them to do, even without the visible evidence that you're packing food. One other thing that just made me think of is also doing nose work games with your dog for their food bowls, right? So it doesn't always have to be a super like intense training session, right? Maybe you guys just need to have some fun today. That's where you can add in. And granted, we always think training is fun, but you get what I mean. Um, so you could do um, hidden, like hide those again on the paper plate, but hide them around the room and then do nose work games with your dog. That's a super biologically fulfilling thing for a lot of dogs. So it may not look like you're doing a lot, but you're burning a lot of mental energy for them to sniff out the treats. And I think it is fascinating to see a dog, like when, when you're doing a nose work and they literally, they, the plate of food is like right in front of their face, but they walk right past it. They're not searching with their eyes. They're searching with their nose. And because of the, maybe the airflow in the room or whatever the case is, the scent of that food is wafting off in a different direction. And they're truly following the scent of the food. It's really, really fun to like learn that with your dogs. So again, so nose work is another fun game that you could play with your dog's food. 
And your dog might be playing nose work games without you even asking them to. For example, my daughter has a dog and a few years ago, it wasn't in a room and it wasn't confined and we were all out. And the dog got out and walked into my room, into my laundry basket, pulled out my favorite jacket with my logo and my name on it and ate a hole in the pocket (laughs) to access the treats. So yeah, there's nose work that you ask for and then there's nose work that happens to you. And obviously the first one is better than the last one, but I'm sure she loved that game, Sarah. I'm sure she (laughs) felt very biologically fulfilled when she got it. The memo is don't leave treats in your pocket and also make sure that your kid puts their dog away and don't <laughs> been done. So there you go. That's the story for the episode. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. So the biggest takeaway from this is try to leverage your dog's meals, right? Try to use them in a way that's going to be training focused, relationship focused. Don't just give them that free bowl of food. It's a waste, right? If you can't feed them, if you can't do a training session or a nose work session, whatever it is, try to at least put it in like an interactive food toy of some kind to help engage them mentally. All right, guys. So as always, if you enjoyed this episode, we'd love it if you would like, rate, subscribe, tell a friend, share this episode somewhere. Our goal is creating an awesome community of dog lovers and learners. So thanks again for joining us and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye guys.